Bat by D. H. Lawrence. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. At evening, sitting on this terrace, when the sun from the west beyond Pisa, beyond the mountains of Carrera, departs, and the world is taken by surprise, when the tired flower of Florence is in gloom beneath the flowing brown hills surrounding, when, under the arches of the Ponte Vecchio, a green light enters against stream, flush from the west, against the current of obscure Arno. Look up, and you see things flying between the day and the night, swallows with spools of dark thread sewing the shadows together. A circle swoop, and a quick parabola under the bridge arches, where light pushes through. A sudden turning upon itself of a thing in the air. A dip to the water. And you think, the swallows are flying so late. Swallows? Dark air life looping, yet missing the pure loop. A twitch, a twitter, an elastic shudder in flight, and serrated wings against the sky, like a glove, a black glove thrown up at the light, and falling back. Never swallows. Bats! The swallows are gone. At a wavering instant the swallows gave way to bats by the Ponte Vecchio, changing guard. Bats and an uneasy creeping in one scalp as the bats swoop overhead, flying madly. Pipistrello, black piper on an infinitesimal pipe, little lumps that fly in air and have voices indefinite, wildly vindictive, wings like bits of umbrella. Bats, creatures that hang themselves up like an old rag to sleep and disgustingly upside down, hanging upside down like rows of disgusting old rags, and grinning in their sleep. Bats! Not for me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Envoy by Ezra Pound. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. Go, dumb-born book, tell her that sang me once the song of laws. Hadst thou but song, as thou hast subjects known? Then were there cause in thee that should condone even my faults that heavy upon me lie and build her glories their longevity. Tell her that shed such treasure in the air, wrecking naught else but that her graces give life to the moment, I would bid them live as roses might, in magic amber laid, red overwrought with orange, and all made one substance and one color, braving time. Tell her that goes with song upon her lips, but sings not out the song, nor knows the maker of it. Some other mouth may be as fair as hers, might in new ages gain her worshippers, when our two dusts with wallers shall be laid, sifting on siftings in oblivion, till change hath broken down all things, save beauty alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain further instructions by ezra pound read for librivox.org by alan davis drake come my songs let us express our baser passions. Let us express our envy for the man with a steady job and no worry about the future. 
You are very idle, my songs. I fear you will come to a bad end. You stand about the streets. You loiter at the corners and bus stops. You do next to nothing at all. You do not even express our inner nobilities. You will come to a very bad end. And I? I have gone half-cracked. I have talked to you so much that I almost see you about me. Insolent little beasts, shameless, devoid of clothing. But you, newest song of the lot, you are not old enough to have done much mischief. I will get you a green coat out of China with dragons worked upon it. I will get you the scarlet silk trousers from the statue of the infant Christ at Santa Maria Novella. Lest they say we are lacking in taste, or that there is no caste in this family. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Green by D. H. Lawrence. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. The sky was apple green. The sky was green wine held up in the sun. The moon was a golden petal between. She opened her eyes, and green they shone, clear like flowers undone. For the first time, now, for the first time seen. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I would, I might forget, that I am I. Sonnet 7 by George Santayana Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake I would, I might forget, that I am I, And break the heavy chain that binds me fast, Whose links about myself my deeds have cast. What in the body's tomb doth buried lie is boundless. Tis the spirit of the sky, lord of the future, guardian of the past, and soon must forth to know his own at last. In his large life to live, I fain would die, happy the dumb beast, hungering for food but calling not his suffering his own. Blessed the angel, gazing on all good, but knowing not he sits upon a throne. Wretched the mortal, pondering his mood, and doomed to know his aching heart alone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lightly Come or Lightly Go by James Joyce For LibriVox.org Narrated by Sean McKinley Lightly come or lightly go, Though thy heart presage thee woe, Veils and many a wasted sun, Oread, let thy laughter run, Till the irreverent mountain air Ripple all thy flying hair. Lightly, lightly, ever so, Clouds that wrap the veils below, At the hour of evenstar, Lowliest attendants are. Love and laughter, song confessed, When the heart is heaviest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lines by a Person of Quality by J. B. B. Nichols The loves that doubted, the loves that dissembled, that still mistrusted themselves and trembled, that held back their hands and would not touch, who strained sad eyes to look more nearly, and saw too curiously and clearly what others blindly clutch, to whom their passion seemed only seeming, 
who dozed and dreamed they were only dreaming, and fell in a dusk of dreams on sleep when dreams and darkness are rent asunder and morn makes mocks of their doubts and wonder what should they do but weep end of poem this recording is in the public domain memory by thomas bailey aldrich read for librivox dot org by leanne howlett my mind lets go a thousand things, like dates of wars and deaths of kings, and yet recalls the very hour. Twas noon by yonder village tower, and on the last blue noon in May. The wind came briskly up this way, crisping the brook beside the road. Then, pausing here, set down its load of pine scents, and shook listlessly two petals from that wild rose tree. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mourner by Adelaide Crapsey. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. I have no heart for noontide and the sun, but I will take me where more tender night shakes, fold on fold her dewy darkness down, and shelters me that I may weep in peace, and feel no pitying eyes, and hear no voice attempt my grief in comfort's alien tongue. Where cypress, more black than night is black, border straight paths, or where, on hillside slopes, the dim gray glimmer of the olive trees lies like a breath, a ghost upon the dark. There will I wander when the nightingale ceases, and even the veiled stars withdraw their tremulous light. There find myself at rest, a silence and a shadow in the gloom. But all the dead of all the world shall know the pacing of my sable-sandaled feet and know my tear-drenched veil along the grass, and think them less forsaken in their graves, saying, There's one remembers, one still mourns, for the forgotten dead are dead indeed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Nightmare by W. S. Gilbert Read for LibriVox.org by Patrick Beverley When you're lying awake with a dismal headache and repose is tabooed by anxiety, I conceive you may use any language you choose to indulge in without impropriety, for your brain is on fire, the bedclothes conspire of usual slumber to plunder you, First your counterpane goes and uncovers your toes, and your sheet slips demurely from under you. Then the blanketing tickles, you feel like mixed pickles, so terribly sharp is the pricking. And you're hot and you're cross, and you tumble and toss, till there's nothing twixt you and the ticking. Then the bedclothes all creep to the ground in a heap, and you pick em all up in a tangle. Next your pillow resigns and politely declines to remain at its usual angle. Well, you get some repose in the form of a doze, with hot eyeballs and head ever aching. But your slumbering teems with such horrible dreams that you'd very much better be waking. For you dream you are crossing the channel and tossing about in a steamer from Harwich, which is something between a large bathing machine and a very small second-class carriage. And you're giving a treat, penny ice and cold meat, to a party of friends and relations. They're a ravenous horde, and they all came on board at Sloane Square and South Kensington stations. And bound on that journey, you find your attorney, who started that morning from Devon. He's a bit undersized, and you don't feel surprised when he tells you he's only eleven. Well, you're driving like mad with this singular lad. By the by, the ship's now a four-wheeler. And you're playing round games, and he calls you bad names when you tell him that ties pay the dealer. 
but this you can't stand. So you throw up your hand, and you find you're as cold as an icicle. In your shirt and your socks, the black silk with gold clocks, crossing Salisbury Plain on a bicycle. And he and the crew are on bicycles too, which they've somehow or other invested in, and he's telling the tars all the particulars of a company he's interested in. It's a scheme of devices to get at low prices all goods from cough mixtures to cables, which tickled the sailors by treating retailers as though they were all vegetables. You get a good spadesman to plant a small tradesman, first take off his boots with a boot tree, and his legs will take root, and his fingers will shoot, and they'll blossom and bud like a fruit tree. From the green grocer tree you get grapes and green pea, cauliflower, pineapple, and cranberries, while the pastry cook plant cherry brandy will grant, apple puffs and three corners and banberries. The shares are a penny, and ever so many are taken by Rothschild and Baring, and just as a few are allotted to you, you awake with a shudder despairing. You're a regular wreck with a crick in your neck, and no wonder you snore for your head's on the floor, and you've needles and pins from your soles to your shins, and your flesh is a creep for your left leg's asleep, and you've cramp in your toes, and a fly on your nose, and some fluff in your lung, and a feverish tongue, and a thirst that's intense, and a general sense that you haven't been sleeping in clover. <gasps> but the darkness has passed, and it's daylight at last, and the night has been long, ditto ditto my song, and thank goodness they're both of them over. End of recording. This recording is in the public domain. O Southland by James Weldon Johnson For LibriVox.org Narrated by Sean McKinley O Southland, O Southland, Have you not heard the call? The trumpet blown, the word made known To the nations one and all? The watchword, the hope word, Salvation's present plan? A gospel new for all, for you. Man shall be saved by man. O Southland, O Southland, Do you not hear to-day The mighty beat of onward feet, And know you not their way? Tis forward, tis upward, On to the fair white arch Of freedom's dome, and there is room For each man who would march. O Southland, fair Southland, then why do you still cling to an idle age and a musty page, to a dead and useless thing? Tis springtime, tis work time, the world is young again, and God's above, and God is love, and men are only men. O Southland, my Southland, O Birthland, do not shirk the toilsome task, nor respite ask, but gird you for the work. Remember, remember, that weakness stalks in pride, that he is strong who helps along the faint one at his side. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Pasture by Robert Frost. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. I'm going out to clean the pasture spring. I'll only stop to rake the leaves away, and wait to watch the water clear, I may. I shan't be gone long. You come too. I'm going out to fetch the little calf that's standing by the mother. It's so young. It totters when she licks it with her tongue. I shan't be long. You come too. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Piano by D. H. Lawrence. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recording are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, Please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jean Lambert. Piano Softly, in the dusk, a woman is singing to me, taking me back down the vista of years till I see a child sitting under the piano in the boom of the tingling strings, 
and pressing the small, poised feet of a mother who smiles as she sings. In spite of myself, the insidious mastery of song betrays me back, till the art of me weeps to belong to the whole Sunday evenings at home with winter outside and hymns in the cozy parlor, the tinkling piano our guide. So now it is vain for the singer to burst into clamor with the great black piano appassionato. The glamour of childhood days is upon me. My manhood is cast down in the flood of remembrance. I weep like a child for the past. End of Piano by D. H. Lawrence This recording is in the public domain. Seeking Beauty by W. H. Davies Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett Cold winds can never freeze nor thunder sour the cup of cheer that beauty draws for me out of those azure heavens and this green earth. I drink and drink and thirst the more I see. To see the dewdrops thrill the blades of grass makes my whole body shake. For here's my choice of either sun or shade, and both are green. A chaffinch laughs in his melodious voice. The banks are stormed by Speedwell, that blue flower so like a little heaven with one star out. I see an amber lake of buttercups, and hawthorn foams the hedges round about. The old oak tree looks now so green and young that even swallows perch a while and sing. This is that time of year so sweet and warm, when bats wait not for stars ere they take wing. As long as I love beauty I am young, am young or old as I love more or less. When beauty is not heated or seems stale, my life's a cheat, let death end my distress. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Snowflakes by Henry Watsworth Longfellow This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jean Lambert Snowflakes Out of the bosom of the air out of the cloud folds of her garments shaken, over the woodlands brown and bare, over the harvest fields forsaken, silent and soft and slow, descends the snow. Even as our cloudy fancies take a suddenly shape in some divine expression, even as the troubled art doth make in white countenance confession, the troubled sky reveals the grief it feels. This is the poem of the air, slowly in silent syllables recorded. This is the secret of despair, long in its cloudy bosom hoarded, now whispered and revealed to wood and field. End of Snowflake by Henry Watsworth Longfellow This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet 130 by William Shakespeare For LibriVox.org Narrated by Sean McKinley My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done. If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked, red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go, my mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground, and yet by heaven 
I think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. There may be chaos still around the world. By George Santayana. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake. There may be chaos still around the world, This little world that in my thinking lies. For mine own bosom is the paradise Where all my life's fair visions are unfurled. Within my nature's shell I slumber curled, Unmindful of the changing outer skies. Where now? perchance some newborn Eros flies, or some old Kronos from his throne is hurled. I heed them not, or if the subtle night haunt me with deities I never saw, I soon mine eyelids' drowsy curtain draw to hide their myriad faces from my sight. They threat in vain, the whirlwind cannot awe a happy snowflake dancing in the flaw. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thou Leanest to the Shell of Night by James Joyce. For LibriVox.org. Narrated by Sean McKinley. Thou leanest to the shell of night, dear lady, a divining ear. In that soft quiring of delight, what sound hath made thy heart to fear? Seemed it of rivers rushing forth from the gray deserts of the north? That mood of thine is his, if thou but scan it well, who a mad tale bequeaths to us at ghosting hour conjurable. And all for some strange name he read in Purchas or in Holland's shed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Though I Thy Mithridates Were by James Joyce For LibriVox.org Narrated by Sean McKinley Though I Thy Mithridates Were Framed to defy the poison dart, Yet must thou fold me unaware To know the rapture of thy heart, and I but render and confess The malice of thy tenderness. For elegant and antique phrase, Dearest, my lips wax all too wise, Nor have I known a love Whose praise our piping poets solemnize, Neither a love where may not be Ever so little of falsity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Tiger by William Blake, read for LibriVox.org by Julia K. Walton. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp, dare its deadly terrors clasp? When the stars threw down their spears, and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.